Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to share data in multi-page apps in Dash. So this is one page where I choose a day and a drop-down, and I have a bar graph. And then in the second page in the table, is going to filter the data frame and the data table according to the day chosen. You see, Saturday. If I go back to the bar graph and I choose a different day, Thursday, this graph is going to show only Thursday data. And then I go to the table and I'll see only Thursday data. Go back one more time, go to Sunday, go um, forward to the table and I'll see only Sunday data. So here we're sharing data between uh, pages on a multi-page app in Dash. So let's see how we do this together. This is going to be based on um, the video that I did two weeks ago about how to create multi-page apps in Dash. So just click on the link above to see that video. Now for this sharing data, all you have to do is download the code first. So you have the code and you can see exactly what we're doing on your computer. Go into uh, this link below the video, go to sharing data multi-page app. Under the video, you'll see this uh, and you can download the app file and then pages, and then these files here. So it should look like this. Have it on your computer, so you have the sharing multi-page app. You can call this whatever you want. You have the app file and the pages. See, this is how I have it here. An app file, and inside in the pages, I have these separate pages. Okay, so pause the video if you need to download to your computer. Now that you have everything inside your computer, let's continue. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is the app file. This is outside of the pages. Now this app file, we're importing all the, all the libraries that we need. And here is where we're going to bring the data into our app. You see, we're bringing the built-in Plotly Express data tips, tips data into our app and we're printing it. So this is how the tips data looks like total bill, tips, sex, smoker, so on and so on. This is built-in example data inside Plotly Express. You can obviously bring in data in a, in a different way. You can bring in data uh, through a, a CSV sheet uh, or through, uh, you can build the data here if you want, or you can bring it in from an API or, or a database. I have many different videos on how to bring in your data. But this is just for an example. So we're using the Plotly Express tips data. And now we're going to convert this pandas data frame, convert it to a list of dictionaries. I'm going to explain why we do that in one minute. Okay, now the next thing you need to do, this is very, very similar. This is almost all the same code that we had two weeks ago in the multi-page app um, video that I showed you, which is also, also right here if you go back. It's right here, the dynamic, the multi-page app. This is where you can see it as well. So this is very, very similar code. The main difference is that I added suppress callback exceptions because I'm going to need this um, later for one of these callbacks. And the biggest difference is that I added DCC store. Now DCC store is a way to share data uh, in uh, Dash apps. There are actually three ways to share data in Dash apps. If you go to this link under the video, let's go here. This is a Dash documentation. Let's search for share data. This chapter will come up. You can read a little bit about this, but here below is going to tell you there are three places where you can store data and share it on the on uh, for the client. You can use the DCC store. You can share it um, on on a database. Uh, that your customers or clients have access to, or you can use RAM, like something like a, a Redis uh, database as well. So we're going to do the DCC store today to show you how to share data that is going to be stored on the client's browser. And this is only up to like 5 or 10 megabyte. If you have data that's bigger than 10 megabyte, you should probably do like uh, an external database. All right. So we're going to use a DCC store. You can also go in here again and look for DCC store, and this will come up. And you can read all about the DCC store and all the examples they give here. The most important thing is below, where you can see that the data type of the DCC store, this is the data property. This is where the data is saved. 
It can only be a dictionary, a list, a number, or a string. So that is why we converted the data frame to a list of dictionaries, because this is a pandas data core data frame, and pandas data frame cannot be stored inside the data property of the store component. You have to store a list or a dictionary or a number. So this is a, we converted it to a list of dictionary, and now this DF we're going to store inside uh, the data prior, um, uh, the data property of the store component. All right. You always store the data inside the data property, and you always use DCC store inside the main app.py file or the uh, main.py or index.py. This is where your app is run. Okay. This is the most important thing to remember. I got stuck, and it took me like two days to figure out why. Why is this not working? The DCC store. You cannot put DCC store in the other pages for now. Maybe in the future it will change. You have to put the DCC store in the main app.py file. Okay, so we'll go over this in a sec. This is doing something else. Right now we're storing the main data uh, of the tips here inside the, the, the DCC store component, which stores it on the client's browser. So now it's going to be here on the back in the like in the back end on the client's browser. You can't really see it, right? So now let's take the store data and build the drop down in this uh, in this uh, bar graph page. Let's build the drop down options and use the second callback to build to to build this graph from the chosen drop down options. Okay? First callback in this bar graph is going to be to take the data, the stored data in the client's browser, take it and build a dropdown, return a dropdown. And in the second callback, we're going to take the value of the dropdown, the value chosen, and we're going to build a figure. We're going to build a bar graph. Okay, but notice that in this layout, in this bar graph layout, we don't have any DCC store. The DCC store is only on the app.py file the main file that is being executed. Okay, so here we have the layout. Um, uh, we have a choose day, and then we have two empty divs. There's nothing here. There's just, uh, this is where we're going to put our dropdown container. There's going to be a dropdown, and here we're going to put our, our bar graph, all right? Uh, at the beginning, this is empty. There is nothing in there, but as soon as you load the app, these callbacks are going to populate these children. So here I'm going to return. You see the output of this callback is drop down container is the children property of the drop of the drop down container. So it's this one, which means output is always uh, the returned object. So here I'm returning the DCC drop down. All of this I'm returning inside the I'm assigning it to the children of the bar con of, of the uh, sorry the children of the drop down container right here. So this is a DCC dropdown. So how do I build a DCC dropdown? I'm actually, the input of this callback is going to be the store data. Remember the store data is right here on the main page. And it's going to be the, 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 the data property of the store data. The data property of the store data. So I'm going to take the data right here. And I'm going to, uh, this. remember, this data is a list of dictionaries. Remember, we stored this as a list of dictionaries. So let's convert this back to a pandas data frame. To convert it back to a pandas data frame, uh, row 20, this is how you do it. And now this is a pandas data frame. You can also look by just saying print type DFF, and you'll see that it's a pandas data frame. Okay. So now we have a pandas data frame, and now we can build a dropdown. The dropdown is going to have an ID. Now the options inside the dropdowns are going to be, we're just looping over the, the, the day column, this column right here, Sunday, 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 this has all the days in it, um, of the data frame, right? So I, I, I hear I took the data frame from the client's browser that's that's saved in the client's browser up to 10 megabyte don't save more than that and then i'm taking it 
to populate the options of the drop down. So now I have the unique days are Sunday, Saturday, Thursday, and Friday. We don't have any Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm taking that. And then the first value is going to be whatever the first day is. And then I'm going to I'm going to persist. Persist true. And session just means that I'm going to um, this data is going to persist if I if I move to a different page. If I go to table and then I go back, it's still Sunday. If I go to Thursday and then I go to table and I go back, it's still it's still Thursday. All right. And that's because I use the persist, persist true and persist uh, type. I think I go over this in the drop down uh, video. So definitely just look uh, for the drop down video in my playlist all about the drop down and you'll learn about the persistence. OK, so now that we built the drop down and it's inside inside this children, which is only the second div right here, right? It's right here. Now we have to take the value that is chosen and build a graph out of it. So that is the second callback. We're going to take the value that is chosen from the dropdown. This is value. Dropdown is the ID. OK, uh, just a quick uh, note, because a dropdown is an ID that's created inside the callback, we have to put suppress callback exceptions. OK, uh, all IDs should be created inside the layout. But if you have IDs that are new and are created inside components and IDs that are created inside callbacks, we have to use suppress callback exception. All right, so we're going to take the value that was chosen by the dropdown, and this is what we're going to call it dropdown day. We're going to take this value, and so if we change this to Thursday, now this value will be Thursday, and this value will be um, uh, Thursday, and so on and so on. Okay. We're going to take this value and we're also going to take the data again, the data that's, that's the data frame, the tips um, that is inside the client's browser right here. Data, store data, just like we did here. Because we need a data frame. Then we're going to take it, we're going to uh, again convert it to a pandas data frame, DFF. And then we're going to say um, filter the rows of the day column where we only have rows that are equal to the drop down day. So if it's Thursday, it's Thursday. If I change this to Saturday, this is going to be Saturday, and this is going to be Saturday, and this is going to be Saturday. Okay. So now we're filtered the main uh, data to only rows with Saturday, and now we can build our graph. We're building a graph with this data frame with only Saturday rows, and then we're putting the x-axis, y-axis, color, and bar mode. Right. And we have our figure, and now we're going to return our figure inside the dash core component graph. This is how you build figures inside. You uh, present the figures onto the page. You put them inside the DCC graph. And this returns as the first object of the output. So this is returned to the first output, which is the children of the bar container. Children of the bar container is right here, bar container, children. So this graph, DCC graph, uh, where we have the uh, Plotly Express bar chart is going to go in here, right under the drop down. See? See so if I change this to Sunday, filtering the data, and now we have a bar graph only with Sunday data. Okay, so how, remember, what we did here is we took the, the uh, data from that was stored in the client's browser, and we also took the drop down day that was chosen by, which is the value chosen by the user in the dropdown. Okay, so now that we, we built the graph, the next thing we want to do is we want to um, take the day that's chosen and use this filter data or use this day to filter our data in the data table. So the data table doesn't show all days, but it only shows the days that was chosen. So you can do this in two different ways. You can you can filter the data first and store that filter data, or you can just transfer the day. And we're going to transfer the day. Let me show you what this means, because I know this is a little bit vague. OK, so let's go to the paragraph, the bar graph. Here's where we chose the day, right? The drop down day is a drop down day that was chosen, Sunday, Saturday, um, Friday. And we're going to return this day 
right here, which is just a string, right? Just a Sunday or or a Saturday, just a string. We're going to return it into the second output, into the data property of the store dropdown value. Now, what is this? Store dropdown value is another store component that we have in our main app file. Remember, all store components have to go into the main app file. So we're storing it inside here. So instead of none, we're going to have um, Sunday or Saturday or Friday or whatever, right? So this is being stored on the client's browser. And now that we have it inside the client's browser, now we can go, and it's just a day. This is just a string, right? Now we can go into the table file and we'll take that day, we'll filter the data, and we'll create the data table, okay? Um, so here you can see in the layout of the data table, of, of the table file, we only have an empty div. There's nothing in here, empty children. And we're going to um, take the data from the store dropdown value. Remember, this is either Sunday or Sunday or Saturday or Friday. And we're also going to take the, the main data frame with all the tips, all this information. And this is how we're going to build our dash data table, right? So let's see. This is the main data frame, right? Belongs to this. And this is this data belongs to the second argument. This is the day chosen, right? That's both of these are store components, data stored in the browser. So we're going to say if day is none, because at the very, very beginning, when you just start your app, let's say on the table page, if I refresh this on the table page, the the it it, it didn't it didn't load the bar graph page. So there is no value was chosen in the dropdown. So this data, if you just start from the table page, this data at the very beginning is none, right? So I'm going to say if data, if the day chosen is none, the day here is the actual data from the stored component. If the day is none, then just return a header saying, please choose a day on the bar graph page. So we'll go to the bar graph page, choose a day, Sunday. You don't even have to choose. You just have to load it or you can change it if you want Thursday and then go to table and it's going to show. All right. So it says if if day is none, just choose something. And then it says else or if something is chosen, then we'll take the, the main data frame with all the tips right from right here, the first storage component. We're going to turn it. This is a list of dictionaries. Remember, we're going to turn it into a pandas data frame, and then we're going to filter the pandas data frame. We're going to filter the day column so it equals so it equals the day, the day chosen, the day that's saved on the on the client's browser. So this is very this is exactly the same as this right here, okay? And you can even call it drop down day as well. But we're doing exactly the same thing. You can call this drop down day. But this is how you transfer data from one page to the other. You store the data that you want inside the, the, the uh, store component on the main page. And then you pull that data from the main page, which is on the client's browser, and you do whatever you want with it. So here we just pulled the day because we just stored the day. We're filtering our data frame for that day. And then we're creating our, our table. My table is a, a dash data table. Um, with um, all the columns and all the data uh, inside each and every each and every row of the data table. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, that is how you you um, store data. Very important. Always remember you use the DCC store always on the main page. All right, and then you can uh, refer to the data that's stored in there um, through the different the different pages that you have. I hope this was helpful. If it was, um, um, click below to um, become a subscriber, uh, give a thumbs up, share with your um, colleagues, friends, uh, professors, and just say hi on the YouTube comments. Um, that's pretty it. I hope to. I hope. Uh, I hope you have a happy holidays. It's it's the end of the year. I hope you enjoy. Um, spend time with family and friends, and I'll see you. I'll see you next year. Always remember, we're better together. So help each other out. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.